What is up guys, Rick is here with new video and today I have for you 65 Stellar Crystals and while that isn't too impressive, uh, it is actually enough for us to upgrade Scalita to Supreme Plus. So we're going to do exactly that, test her and to be honest, I already know she's good. Uh, if you saw my last live stream, you know too, she is crazy. She's crazy and I know you will be surprised to see it. So let's go, let's get some insane summons, maybe We'll get the triple again. If I get the triple again for the last copy that I need, I'm going crazy. So, uh, yeah, let's see about that. First one, instant summon. It was a guaranteed one, though. Of course, we were on the pity time. I saw this summon guaranteed Skalita in it. Uh, let's see. And we got 6,666 gems on top. I take that. I take 6,666 gems. I don't mind that at all. That's all right for me. Let's go. <laughs> I also get five of the uh, tile essence there. Mercy. Also take another one. I take another Skalita. Easy going. Should have just bought 20. Should have just bought 20. It's enough. Oh, temporal essence in there. And I mean, now it's, it's kind of a pity. I mean, the question now remains. Do I just go for Paragon Skalita? Because <laughs> I need the copies and I kind of want her at Paragon. I don't really mind Belial or Dionel. I don't really care. I think we just get extra copies of Scalita and really go for Paragon. Because that's crazy on her. That's really crazy, I saw that. Let's get extra Scalita copies. Uh, because we are basically a Paragon. The only thing, the reason we did not do that is because I just didn't want to uh, do more summons because that's, that enables pop-up packs and then we get pop-up packs and I kind of want to buy those and I didn't want to spend that much this month. So, uh, I think we're just going to continue... <laughs> I'm going to get the get her to Paragon 1. So I get the copies for that and get her to Paragon 1 later. I think that's going to be good. Oh. Okay, <laughs> that is like a 0.5% chance for the 5 Temporal Essence and we got 3000 gems on top. Uh, let's take a little look at that. So that was also a Dazzling Stone. So we are at the 0.5% chance there and we have 0.5% chance for 3000 diamonds. <laughs> You t uh, uh, use the math on that and tell me if that is crazy. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it was more unlikely than three copies of her in one pull. Yeah, and then we get unlucky here. But f five title essence three times is also kind of alright. No, we continue. And we get another copy. I like to see that. Okay, I think we need four for Paragon 1. So we need uh, like three more. We obviously can't get the double. But... Uh, Still, we got another one. Let's continue. And that's sadly it, unless we go for the single ones. Ah, let's do the single ones. Let's do the single ones. Maybe we get one. Quick clicking here. Let's go. Five more. But that's a good amount of copies there. And I think we are rather lucky. Uh, don't remind me today. That was kind of annoying. It was the last one. No, that's the last one. And ah, I never got some, uh, one uh, in the single pulls. It's a bit weird, but I don't mind. Okay. Uh, now that we have that, let's go to our bag. Scarlita. We got one copy more than we need, which is okay. We're going to go for Uruthur to Paragon, so that will be very, very nice. And we get an insane ability here. The insane ability is that one, she goes into the air at the beginning of the fight. And uh, during that time when she's in the air... She basically gives your heroes shields. And those shields um, are pretty strong, are pretty good. But now she also increases uh, the allied heroes fist def and magic def by 50% of her own fist def and magic def. And her fist def and magic def is particularly high. So it is actually very, very nice. There we go. Supreme plus here. Fourth Skalita. Very, very great. We got the weapon to plus 10. And that is important. That is important. That is something I'm going to show you now. Because this weapon is actually insane. I want to upgrade her to plus 50. I'm not exactly sure if we can do that right now. But first of all, the basic effect is you deal true damage if there are four surviving non-summed allies other than herself on the battlefield. So true damage in general, very, very good. Uh, helps us deal damage even against heroes with high defenses. So that is very, very nice. Um, if you upgrade to plus five, that gets lower to three surviving non-summed allies. So one of them can die. Makes it a bit easier. And then you get the crazy one. And that is the Haymaker. That is like the ability that you really want. Skalita's skills knock the non-boss enemies with HP lower than 180% and HP ratio below 20% out of the battlefield. The enemy sent out of combat this way cannot return and is considered defeated. 
And I think you will have to see that to know what I mean. So let's go for some testing now. The main problem we have is um, I'm a bit overpowered for AFK stages right now. And she needs 15 seconds to actually come to the battlefield. So at that point, um, we kind of need to drag out the fight a little bit. Um, the idea I had was to go with something like this. So that we go with uh, Skalita and we go with basically the full healer comp. And that should give us 15 seconds to actually uh, to, for her to actually come down. So let's see if that works out. Uh, we also need four enemies to survive because the other thought I had was trying like Damien uh, and just putting her together with Damien there. But if she, there is nobody left on the board that she can buff, she actually immediately comes down. So she immediately ends that mode, comes down on the board and uh, starts hitting enemies. There we see, saw her weapon. We actually just nuked them straight off the map, which is a great ability, by the way, if you fight something like Torin, because no, there is no revive from that. That is just straight off the map. Goodbye. You're gone. And uh, I love her design of her abilities. Yeah, so that was actually a fine display of her abilities, I would say. Um, the disadvantage of all of that is really in those 15 seconds. It is in those 15 seconds, and I can uh, basically show that in PvP for you. Uh, while she is a great asset for PvP, you can quickly lose a fight just because you had those 15 seconds in which she wasn't on the board to affect the fight in a meaningful way. Uh, let's attack this guy. And uh, I think the lineup like this is all right. We took Damien out of this lineup and put Skalita in her there. Uh, I saw sometimes when people put Thorin or replace Arden. Uh, that is also an option. We should, however, definitely take the Vala mark on our uh, Iron because he's protected by Thorin, so that is pretty good. Um, advantage of her here, faction bonus. We get a bigger faction bonus, actually. Uh, either the Graveborn one or the uh, Forest one. Well, compared to Damien, not really, because Damien also gave us that faction bonus. So, yeah. Uh, let's see how that turns out. We first uh, activate our Iron. Then our Skalita goes into the air, starts giving out shields to our Thorin, who is now super tanky. And now we wait uh, if we can nuke this guy. Sometimes you get to second ult on Thorin before you get uh, her to en enter the battle even. And here she nearly died. Do you see that? She nearly died. I don't think she even did her ult. So that is something that I noticed. And then the impact she has on the fight is rather limited. Because we have 79k damage here. That is not good. That is really not good. Um, on the other hand, if she enters the fight later on, uh, hits the Thorin, nukes that Thorin from the board, that can be very, very good. But even at that investment, Sometimes faster strategies can be more promising. So that is something to keep in mind when you use her. And um, it all really depends on the enemy uh, that you fight. If he's very strong, maybe you will have more ample amount of amounts of time to actually do something against him. And we can try her in Dream Realm as well. Uh, though I don't have a specific Dream Realm team that we can use her. We have OD here. Hmm. I mean, we can certainly try something like that and then maybe put in Skalita. Is that a faction? Do we have faction bonus? We have faction bonus because we have a Celestial and a Hypogene hero in here. Um, so yeah, I would say we just try that. I mean, she should be able to do some good damage. Uh, but for the first 15 seconds, obviously, we don't do damage at all. So uh, that is that is a bit of a disadvantage. She's in the air. Can't be frozen. Uh, unfroze, freeze, unfroze, froze. Our uh, our um, Thorin. Oh, so that was pretty nice. I wonder how fast she is with the unfreezing. Really, uh, apparently not at all because she doesn't care. Oh, now she cares. And that was pretty smooth. That was honestly pretty smooth. I mean, we deal true damage all the time as long as our heroes here stay alive. Uh, we are in a pretty good, a pretty good position of that. So uh, we should be able to get our heroes out of there quite fast, um, which is pretty nice. The Smokey, however, bit of a bad, in a bad position. And we notice that now on the Skalita being hit quite a lot. So that is not very nice. She's just a bit out of range, but didn't really matter. She died in the last second. A 32 million, not a new record. Let's see her damage numbers. And her damage numbers, uh, yeah. 
also not that insane really on that boss. It was beaten out a bit by Thorin. Uh, one of her ults was actually used on a snowman, which she dealt with quite well. So, I mean, it's it's not really overwhelmingly good. On Snow Stumper, I would say she's decent at best. I mean, like, the thing is, um, she doesn't really have that point going for her that you say, yeah, okay, she c you can use her in place of some other hero that you can't get. Because she is a celestial hero. She is difficult to get. So probably if you have her, you have a hero like Merrily or OD as well. So I don't really give her that point on that. So not really recommended on the, in this one. PvP, however, I see that you can build a PvP team around her. Just keep in mind, you are a bit slow with her. You have the advantage of good survivability for the first 15 seconds. She is this double support and um, and offensive machine. You need your team to survive to an extent. If she's the last one on the board, she won't deal true damage. Not Her not dealing true damage will greatly diminish the amount of damage she can deal. So uh, in that sense, you have a bit of a problem there if your team dies too fast. And um, if you want to run an early burst comp, well, then that, this is not the hero for you because she will only come down later. She can is great to finish la uh, units later on, though, because you have some rewife abilities. She can just completely bypass and nuke enemies off the board. So that is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, she requires a ton of investment. I really needed a ton of Stargast Crystals. You saw the videos and uh, it's only guaranteed every 40 attempts. I want to upgrade her further because I, I care for this finishing ability, for this execution ability that she has. And also I think that it looks super fancy. We saw a bit of it. Uh, if you want to see some great PvP examples of that, by the way, we uh, did the live stream for the Floribel summons. And in the first 30 minutes of that, we were on the account of Kazumi. I did some fights there we watched some pvp recordings that he did because i didn't want to destroy his pvp score um, but there were some prime examples of her finishing off thorns and everything in pvp and really having a big influence on the fight sometimes being like uh, one of the last heroes to come down then completely turning the tides in a fight so that is really really great um now comparing her to the uh, hero that i owned to rainier i personally think rainier had a bigger impact on my account especially early on i tended to use her a bit less later but uh, for bosses of course he's still in there he's great support for that buffs damage and everything um i'm i'm pretty happy with her as my second unit but i also don't regret taking rainier as my first so that is like the way that i see this um overall definitely a great hero the one with downsides you should consider. So that is something to keep in mind, in my opinion. But I would still recommend her, probably as a second hero, to take from Stargate Summons. What is your opinion on Skalita? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. I'm always happy to see that number grow. And with that, I wish you a great day. We'll see us in the next one.